Welcome to TMXC Adventures, Lisa here. I hope you're having a great day so far. Hey, so over the weekend, I was planning out a week ahead. I try and do that on a Sunday night, uh, although we did have a long weekend here at this last weekend. Uh, and I stumbled across a recipe I've never seen before. I don't know if it's new, I can't remember, but let's jump together and make this too easy chocolate cake. I'm actually hoping it reminds me of the one my mum made when I was a kid, but time will tell. I've never made it before. Also because we don't generally eat chocolate cake just as chocolate cake. However, we've been unwell, and so when you're like that, you kind of eat just about anything. So we're gonna go to my week, and we're going to, we do eat the good stuff too, okay? Just put it in context, but you do go for comfort food. My kids have had all sorts of things. Um, they've had like, what are they called? We made sago pudding the other day with pineapple. Does anyone, does anyone know what that is? If you don't, that's okay. If you do, uh, that's go you as well. So, you know, things like that. I also did do a bit of a clean out last week of the pantry, hence the reason I had the little tapioca balls to make sago pudding. So, you know, it must be that spring cleaning in the air that uh, last week had to be done. So, too easy chocolate cake, you can see it there. I've also got on the planner for dinner tonight, the chicken Alaska from the 28 Day Sam Wood Challenge. So, highly rated. Um, I've heard good things about the prawn and chicken one. So, um, I'm hoping it's just as good. We'll soon find out. Anyway, I'm gonna double this today because there's absolutely no point in my house of making a single serve because it will be eaten at morning tea time and there'll be none left for tomorrow. So we're gonna double it and hope that it lasts at least more than one go. So I'm gonna go start cooking. Please say hi if you're watching on. Um, if you've got questions, do reach out. I'd love to answer them. Um, obviously you engaging in some way lets the social media platform know that you like the content, they put it on your newsfeed. Otherwise it will just disappear. So that's how it kind of rolls. Okay, preheat your oven and then grease a tray. And it's a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter. I've got this Pyrex dish, I'll show you soon. It's a glass one, it's it's longer, probably 35 by probably 22 or something. So that's what I'm gonna use because I'm doubling this. First things first is some butter. So into the bowl goes, we're putting in double, so 240 without the flat paper. Let's not take the paper in there as well. So. And I've guesstimated, by the way, I have just cut a block in just under half. And I figured that would be close enough. Hopefully my maths is okay today. Can't guarantee anything. All right. Let's get this here as well. What do we got? 222. That'll do. Close enough. What's 20 grams? It'll be fine. Good morning, and Anna. Hello, Anne-Marie. Lovely to have you on. All right. Next up. It's going to melt it, okay? So now you could extend the cook time. It's melting for uh, two minutes, 60 degrees, speed one. What I am going to do, instead of extending the cook time, is just blitz it for a moment, okay? So I'm turning it up. Now all I did that for was to break up that butter into smaller chunks. They were still quite chunky chunks that I put in there. So I wanted to make it a little bit smaller so it melts a little faster. Now, if you're cooking along to these videos, which I know plenty of you do, now's your time to prep your next lot of ingredients. So there's a preview button in the top right corner. Let's just have a look what's happening in here. I think I over, instead it's gone into a clump, but it won't matter, it's gonna be fine. Um, so we can go preview and we can then see what it needs to, to come out of the, the pantry, the fridge, those sorts of things. Now, this recipe has self-raising flour. I'm using gluten-free plain and I'm gonna convert it over. So if you've never seen or heard me talk about how to convert, I'll show you today. I'm also gonna go a dairy-free milk alternative just to, we don't try and eat too much dairy. Obviously there's butter in this, but you know we don't drink cups of milk here at this house. It doesn't do well. So um, I've got almond milk up the back there. Okay, so there are some swaps, and I'm also going to use today a monk fruit sweetener rather than raw sugar that it calls for. Um, my preference would have actually been some rice malt syrup, um, but I don't have that, so I'm just going to use my monk fruit sweetener. So that's the plan. The other thing you've got there is eggs, baking powder, which you actually need the baking powder to make self-raising flour with the plain flour, and then you've got vanilla essence or extract or paste. Okay, so I've got my own that goes in the fridge. By the way, talking about things going in the fridge, and the other week I showed you how to make your own coffee syrup. And um, I, the amount of people who have messaged me since going, oh my goodness, this is a game changer. I'm gonna save so much money with this in the fridge. 
Uh, it really, if you haven't checked that out, go over to my website, tmxingadventures.com.au. I think I put it under the blog, okay? I'm fairly certain that's where you can find it. Um, it is absolutely amazing. Now you can see part of it's melted, part of it hasn't. I'm just gonna risk it. As I said, I've never made this before. I'm just gonna jump on through. I actually reckon even if you made it a single batch, I think you'll still have chunks of butter in there. Okay, I don't think it's gonna be problematic. I'm not sure, never made it before, but you know, it's all good. I okay, go two eggs, I'm doubling, so I go for four. You notice how I've cracked the egg on the handle? It's a great place for breaking that shell. It gives you a really nice break where you tend to then not have eggshell go in your dish. So, like that. As long as you crack it properly. If you don't crack it properly, it can be problematic. So far, so good. See like that? Perfect little V crack. Fingers in. Ugh, so I don't want to come apart. There we go. We've been uh, cleaning up our veggie patch lately. I'd actually love to get out and show you guys the veggie patch at some stage. It's looking a little overcast right now, so I don't know if I'll get out there today, but. We've been doing some cleaning up out there. The chickens have been enjoying a whole lot of scraps from the veggie patch at the moment, which is probably why the eggshells are a little bit firm at times. So lots of good stuff going over. The end of the brassica season, so the broccoli and the cabbages and stuff have gone over. Still have a few, but you know, not to actually eat, but to send to the chickens. Um, they won't do well and get too warm very quickly. So we've got 100 grams, we're going for 200 grams here. But we've just started a whole lot of, um, we actually just harvested a whole lot of potatoes and sweet potatoes over the weekend. We harvested probably about 15, 20 kilos of potatoes. And we only pulled out one garden of sweet potatoes. So I'm thinking that'll probably only be maybe 10 kilos of sweet potatoes, but we've still got three gardens of sweet potatoes to harvest still. But we're just turning the next lot over in there as well. Okay, vanilla, one teaspoon, two teaspoons. Okay, next. Um, those of you who grow some of your own food, what's seasonal for you at the moment? Let us know if you've got a veggie patch and what's going on out there. We're getting an abundance of tomatoes. We um, actually, I've got a, a, I've got a potato, um, potato, a tomato archway at the moment, which is pretty cool. Where the, the cherry tomatoes and the yellow, we grow yellow tomatoes at times as well. They're romas and they go up. And they go over the trellis and down the other side, which is pretty cool. We have just planted cucumbers, so they're going to be the next thing to go up and over um, once the cherry tomatoes die back. So it's lots of fun out there at the moment. The kids are having a blast. Okay, it says 120 grams. I'm going to cut that down to um, probably 80, and then obviously I'm doing twice a double batch, right? So 160. This is that monk fruit sweetener. Um, it was on sale the other day at... Just watching there. What did I say? 8, 9, 16. Yeah, that. Um, I might put a whisker in. It was on sale at Woolworths the other day, this one. Normally I just buy, that'll do, 100 grams there. So 200 grams. Um, I normally just buy the standard one, but this one, this brown one, it's probably just got something extra in it. I don't even know. Um, doesn't particularly say. So anyway, I just went for that. It was on sale. Nice, is self-raising flour. Okay, 120 grams of self-raising flour. So, gluten-free, you could do this with plain, plain flour, like glutinous plain. If you don't have self-raising, you can make your own, okay? So I'm gonna put in about 230 grams of flour. Watching on the screen up there, make sure I don't miss the number. And then we're gonna to top it, is that 300? What have I done, guys? My brain today. Did you just catch what I've done? I put way too much flour in. I've put an extra 100 grams of flour in. Now the beauty of the Thermomix is it has a memory, so we can take it backwards so long as we don't scoop out the bit below. So that's okay. So I will just do a bit of this until I get to, let's try the right number, 230, not 330. Maybe I need new glasses. That might be a problem too. All right, nearly there. Keep going. So I'm just making sure I'm not scooping from below. I'm sure I'm not the only one in the kitchen that does this. However, I'm happy to be the only one that does it as well. Making a bit of a mess, dropping it down my front. There we go, that's better. All right, making itself raising flour now. So for every 100 grams of weight of plain, you wanna put in one teaspoon of 
baking powder, okay? So I've got 230, so I need two and then approximately a third. Although I wouldn't trust my math today, okay? <laughs> Clearly. All right, next. Now the next step is, actually I'm just gonna jump one ahead. They do have this in the recipe as well. So I'm just gonna, in a second, it's got one teaspoon of baking powder. So I'm just gonna put the two in there as well now, and then I'll go back to the cocoa. Only cause I looked ahead when I was preparing these ingredients and I knew that was coming up. So last things last is a cocoa powder. Let's go back to it. 30 grams, we're putting in, ah, can't open it, 60 grams. This uh, cocoa powder must be where all my spoons are hiding. Let me show you what I mean in a second when I get this number right. So we're going to put in 60 and I'll show you what I mean. 63, look at this. One, I need to cough. That was cocoa in my lungs. <coughs> One spoon, two spoons, three spoons. Anyone else have a spoon problem in their house? This is where they might be. All right, let's finish up. This is the end of the recipe. So it's as simple as this, on with the lid. And you can imagine in your kitchen how quick this will be. I mean, I'm talking to you guys through it and stuff. But in your kitchen, you would have this whipped up in literally less than a minute, right? So on with the lid, 15 seconds, speed five. Once you get all the ingredients in, and I have doubled it, probably should have used cookie dough to double it. However, you know, what's a bit of uh, messing with the ingredients? Look at that. Now, obviously you can see there's a little bit up the sides, so just scrape that in. Okay, capture that in so it becomes part of your food. You could hit the back arrow and redo it. I'm just gonna give it a hand. Mix, look at that. Does that not look luscious and beautiful? Actually, you know what? I'm going to actually mix it through again because I've done about double batch. Now, if you've done a single batch, you probably wouldn't need to do this. I've done a double batch, which usually means an extra half time. So 15 seconds will become seven seconds or eight. Back up to speed. It'll capture the last bit through. Okay, good morning, Andrea. Lovely to have you on. Um, so your, your trick when you double things is you add a half to it. So if you are cooking off, if I had cooked off properly that butter at the beginning, I would have added an extra minute. So it would have been two minute cook, I would have added it to three minutes. Obviously I'm very time sensitive on, on here with you guys, I don't want to take more time than I need to. And I kind of betted on the fact that I could shortcut it. It worked, it's fine. Um, so when I'm doing this part here as well, again, add the extra half time. So when you double something, obviously always be mindful of your quantities. I'm well under the 2.2 the litre max line. So always be mindful of that, but with the time and the temperatures, uh, not temperatures, the time and the, the time, that's all I need, the time, you add an extra half. So if it's 30 seconds, add another 15, make it 45, okay? So that stuff's just sprinkled down off the lid, that's fine, let's pour this in. And, and this is my dish I'm using. Okay, it will rise in the oven, so you do not want to do more than three quarter fill. If it starts looking like it's going to be bigger than three quarters, that's when you enlist a muffin pan and make yourself a little muffin for the side, a taster. Okay, that's my little trick. Now also to get all of the stuff out of the bowl, I do have my trusty TM6 spatula, which I love. Uh, it wipes out pretty nicely, but you do tend to find a little bit stays around the blades. So I'll just get this out of the bowl. Okay. Now to get the extras off the blades, because there's always that chunk in there, just put it back in place. Yum. All right. Measure and cut back in. Just spin it up to speed. Ten for a moment. That's literally all you need to do. That will spin your batter out to the sides, no matter what you're making. Even if I'm making doughs and stuff, look at that, out to the sides. 
By the way, you pour it in and then we're gonna bake. So we're cooking it at 180 for the good old half an hour to 35 minutes. Now, if you make this into muffins instead, which I've not done, first time making this recipe today, um, if you do, you're obviously gonna to need to reduce your time. If you make it into a larger loaf, maybe yours is more like a, a loaf in a loaf tin, so it's tall, you're gonna to need to cook it longer, okay? So this is supposed to be more like a, a flatter, flatter loaf, loaf? Slice, cake, let's just go with cake. Um, so it won't be overly tall, so that's why we can get away with that half hour cook time. But obviously that's really changes depending on, depending on what you've got your cooking in, okay? I reckon this, by the looks of it so far, will be beautiful as like things like if you wanted to make it into circles for birthday cakes and layer them on top. My first impression is this will be beautiful like that, okay? I'm just going for practical food to feed my family. <laughs> So I'm not caring about, you know, fanciness. However, if you were going to put something on top of this, this doesn't have, I don't think it has a recipe for icing. If you wanted to put something on top, you could simply dust it with icing sugar if you're trying to be fancy. The other thing you could do is I do have a course over on my website over there, and it's the Easter grazing box course. I love the grazing box things I do, okay? I'm not a fancy cook. You guys know that. But what I do love is when you can do something and you, you put it in a grazing box and it feels that little bit special. Now, the Easter grazing box series had a beautiful um, chocolate sauce. And I talked about it last week when we were talking about making the syrups and then dressing up the cup and being able to run that around the, the cup and let it run down like a cafe does. And um, that would be lovely put over the top. Okay, that would be the most amazing, delicious it's not, it's not so runny that it runs off. Like think about the syrups that they use at the cafe to line like your frappes and your milkshake cups. That's the texture of it. So it would also make a beautiful icing. Okay, so that would be my suggestion on if you wanted to ice it, something like that would be beautiful. Um, otherwise, I'm not an icing person. To be honest, like I'm a sauce person. Yeah, I've got a fridge full of beautiful luscious sauces savory, sweet, all that sort of stuff. We don't buy tomato sauce, we don't buy it, we make it. Um, that's what we're using all our cherry tomatoes for at the moment. I've got bottles and bottles of tomato, tomatoes cooked up, tomato relish, tomato sauces, barbecue sauces. But, um, so I'm not particularly an icings person, but if I've got sauces, you know, over the top, we're good. So yeah, but anyway guys, I'm gonna get this in the oven. I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. If you've got any questions, I'm here to help. Always love hearing from you. Always love to know you are getting value from these videos. I enjoy sharing them, so I really hope you do find value in them. If there's anything you have questions about, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm here to support you. If you are in Australia, I am a consultant and team leader for Thermomix in Australia. So if you're interested in the business, I'd love to support you to get started in the business. If you're interested in buying a Thermomix or you've got someone who is, I would love to be the one who helps them get a Thermomix on the bench and then helps them get the very most out of it. So let me know if you need a purchase link to do so or you can go to my website because of course I've got it all over there as well. Because I know some people as well like to go looking and get the information before they make a move and that's okay as well. All right, so otherwise have a fantastic day. I can't wait to show some more recipes to you. Let's see how we go. I might even come back later and show you that beautiful recipe. Um, the chicken dish for this evening, which with the brain is just not working. What did I say I was making tonight? Chicken, normally it's oh, Alaska. That's what it was. I'm like, it's normally with prawns. So I'm gonna make a chicken Alaska tonight. I might get online if I get a chance this afternoon if it's quiet enough at my home and share that with you. But otherwise, take care and I can't wait to see you in the next video soon. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.